I'll start over. In the universe, there is an unmeasurable, indescribable force which those who live of the source call intention. And that absolutely everything that exists in the entire cosmos is attached to intent by a connecting link. Sorcerers, all of you, that's what you will be when you leave here, sorcerers, people who live of the source, are not only concerned with understanding and employing that connecting link, but they are especially concerned with cleansing it of the numbing effects brought about by the concerns of living at ordinary levels of consciousness. There is a connecting link between you and everything in this universe is connected to this thing called intention. I'd like to suggest to you that everything that you can look around and see and touch and experience with your senses originated someplace else. You are in this world, folks, but you are not of this world. And you showed up here in this world of form and boundaries and beginnings and ends. You showed up from a field called intention. And you were intended into this universe and into this world by this force field that I'm calling intention in my new book, The Power of Intention, which is a year or so away from being published, I'm calling intention something that is a future pull that is invisible. Every acorn has intention in it to become an oak tree or whatever it is to become. Every apple blossom that just looks like a little flaky pieces of, uh, of flowery substance is nothing but the future pull of an apple. And in you, in a tiny little drop of human protoplasm that collided with another one at the moment of your parents getting together and this thing that we call conception, there was a dot, a tiny little microscopic dot. It happened in a tiny microsecond, a dot. And in that little tiny dot that you can't even see with the naked eye, that you need a microscope to see in that dot, was everything that you were destined to become as a physical being. Your height, your weight, the color of your skin, the color of your eyes, the length of your arms, and the length of everything else, what droops, what doesn't. <laughs> everything that was, and here you are, sitting here, watching it, observing it, noticing it, and you know that there's nothing but who you are is nothing but a ghost in the machine. You're watching it and you're observing it. And it's going to go through its paces and do what it was destined to do in the moment of that microscopic dot, right? I'm six foot one. I didn't decide to be six foot one. I have blue eyes. I have hair falling out of my head and growing on my shoulders, my ears, my nose. <laughs> you have all of these characters. You look at it, you observe it, you notice it, you squeeze the back of your hand. I used to squeeze it, it would snap back. Now I can count how long it takes to get back. <laughs> and you're watching it and you know. But I'd like to present to you in a few moments a little different view on this thing called intention. I'd like you to take a look at the dot that began you in which everything that you were destined to become as a physical being, I'd like you to say to yourself this question, where did the dot come from? Where did it come from? You think it came from the sperm of your father and the, and the, and the coll collision with the egg of your mom? Forget it. It's an illusion. You take that dot, which is your beginnings. A heart starts beating inside of a mother's womb, six, seven weeks after that moment of conception, and it's a total mystery to every great scientist on the planet today. We have no idea what, where that life came from and where it goes after we leave it. No idea. It's a complete and total mystery. So let's look at the dot that began you, and let's take a microscope to it and turn up the magnification on that dot so we can find out where it came from, its source. And we turn up the magnification, and first we see in the dot a whole bunch of molecules. We take that molecular microscope and we toss it out. 
and we take an atomic microscope and we put it on there and we see that inside of the molecules there are tinier, tinier particles called atoms. Then we take this atomic microscope and we turn up the magnification. We say, where did this dot come from? Let's find its source. And inside of those atoms, we see electrons and neutrons and protons and croutons and all of the things that we all memorized when we were in science class. And we say, well, that's, there it is. So we take the electron and we pull it out and we put it into an electron microscope and we turn up the magnification. We're just looking for our source. That's all. And we turn up the magnification and we turn it up and up and up and up and we zoom in and guess what? It's just a whole bunch of particles. Now they call them subatomic particles, but it's mostly just empty spaces with particles all floating around. It's this huge dance. And we take out one of those sub-sub-subatomic particles. This is called quantum physics. This is the study of matter at the sub-sub-subatomic level. What is it like? What happens to matter? And we turn up the magnification as high as we can, and we can now call these things new names. We call them quarks. And we take these quarks, these tiny little sub-sub-subatomic particles, that behave in the strangest of ways because when you look at them and observe them, that changes what they are. At the subatomic level from which all things originate, just the way that we observe something determines whether it will be what it will become. And that's interesting. If we are nothing but subatomic particles in a cell called humanity, the way we look at things literally can impact what it is that we attract or don't attract into our lives. Just the way we look at things. But I'm getting ahead of myself. So we take this little quark and we take it out to uh, Arizona into what they call quantum physics particle accelerators. And we put this quark in a particle accelerator and we rev it up at 250,000 miles an hour in these circular things and we get these things zipping at each other and then we collide them. We collide these tiny little, and we open up the particle accelerator to find out what is the source. And we look inside, and guess what's there? Nothing. At the sub, 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 subatomic level, at the tiniest level, there are no particles. In fact, quantum physics teaches us that particles themselves are not responsible for more particles. St. Paul could have told you that 2,000 years ago. That which is seen hath not come from that which doth appear. The source of everything is not in the physical world. So, let's go back to intention. If everything that you were destined to become is in that little microscopic dot, and that microscopic dot originated from something that has no form to it, is it possible that your physiology and everything that you were destined to become was determined in a world in which there is no form before it ever got into form? Why not? That's where it all came from. Now, if everything that you were physically destined to become is in that microscopic dot, and that dot came from the world of spirit, let's call it spirit, then why isn't it possible that everything that you were destined to become that is not in the physical dimension, that is every thought and every emotion and every great expectation that God has of you and everything that you're capable of becoming, why isn't that in there as well? That intention is a field of energy from which you originated, not a set of particles in a moment of conception. And if that's the case, if you can accept that, then you have to say, what does intention look like? What do you think if you had magical binoculars that you could, you could somehow adjust the focus and you looked over here through these binoculars, and in there you could see the field from which all things emanate. If you could see it, what do you think it would look like? Well, I've just written a whole book about it. <laughs> and one of those chapters is called The Seven Faces of Intention. I suggest to you that intention has a look to it, that this in 
this invisible energy field from which the dot that became you emanated has certain characteristics or qualities. First of all, it is creative. It wants to create. It has to create. Imagine an energy field which is responsible for everything showing up into the physical world, deciding that it didn't want to create. It's too much work, I'm tired, I don't want to do this. It is in a constant state of creativity. It is also, the second quality, is that it is everything that it allows to come into the energy field of <clears throat> the world of boundaries, it is kindly toward. Kindness and intention go hand in hand. 